Hello, everybody. All right. First of all, round of applause for all of our speakers today. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Totally amazing. Totally amazing. OK. OK, so um, I'm going to talk about how to put a neural network on an Arduino and why you would do such a thing. Um, I'm TedBot. You can follow me and do the thing. Um, in uh, hex, my name is this terrifying green. OK, so neural networks are a totally hot topic. Um, so uh, you know, I'm going to burn it down a little bit. Um, let me challenge you with this. How do you teach a, or how do you get a, a machine to recognize what a chair is? Um, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily recognize that as a chair. Um, you can't just do a bunch of if-then statements, of course. It's brittle. It'll fail immediately. It won't do what you want it to do. The problem that you're trying to solve is to produce an output that you want according to uh, potentially arbitrary inputs, um, things that you don't know uh, for sure what they're going to look like, things that the program doesn't know what it's going to look like for sure. Um, and um, so when I say neural networks, I mean that, that's a subset of, of all of machine learning. Machine learning is this whole massive, massive thing, and it encompasses a billion types of algorithms. Uh, and uh, neural networks are you know, a subset of that. Um, but basically, you want to, uh, you want to train, in, in many situations, you want to train um, your uh, algorithm on a bunch of examples of things where you already know what, uh, what is supposed to be what. Um, and you want the machine learning algorithm to generalize this information, and then you want it to recognize new inputs that are like the ones it saw before. Um, this is, and, and, and by the way, this is called supervised learning. I'm not going to go like super into the um, details of the, that, although I would love to. Um, the idea between, uh, behind supervised learning is that it's classification. You show the machine a bunch of examples, and you already know for sure what, um, what some of them are. Uh, so you know that um, if you feed a bunch of images, you can say, oh, well, I know that this is an apple. I know that this is a banana. I know that this is an orange. And you train the algorithm on that information. You already know what those things are, gonna, are supposed to be. And then when you show it new data, hopefully it'll be able to classify those things and tell you, I've never seen this image before, but I'm pretty sure it's an apple. Okay? So that's the idea behind classification. And it requires labeled data. Labeled just means that uh, you already know in advance what, um, what the data is. On the other uh, side of things, you have clustering, unsupervised learning. Super, super, super interesting stuff that I don't have time to talk about right now. Um, but I did make this handy machine learning reference guide. Um, so if you need to know what uh, labeled data and unlabeled data looks like, um, second TNG reference of the day. I don't know why I thought I would be the only one. Um, so there's a bunch of applications uh, for this uh, kind of thing, um, um, scenarios in which you'd use machine learning or neural networks. Um, I won't like just go through all of these, but um, image sound recognition is is a, is a, is a massive one. Um, um, you know, I mean, we're we're seeing this increasingly all over the place. Um, face rec recognition, um, voice rec language recognition, um, potentially dystopian as fuck, and then also stuff like classifying Lego bricks is super cool. Um, fire classification. These are sort of like somewhat more mundane examples. Um, uh, if, if you have a bunch of gas centers in a building, um, it, it can actually be surprisingly hard to detect a fire to say unequivocally, like, there's a fire there. A human being can do it easily, but computer, that's a different thing. This is why we have machine learning. Um, sensor linearization, kind of boring. Um, PowerPoint tracking. OK, but bots. Bots are, uh, in many ways, the perfect application for machine learning because uh, you are trying to do complicated things in a very small amount of space in real time. Um, so that's kind of like the biggest challenge. And that's why I'm talking about how to put a neural network on an embedded platform. Because it's really hard, and it's a little bit crazy. Um, but some examples. Um, and uh, uh, this, uh, the slides are on my blog, and then you know, probably on the Open Hardware Summit um, pages. Um, so you can get all of these links. And then there's also a slide at the end with um, references and a bunch of further information. Um, so these are just some examples on the vast internet um, of uh, people who have put neural networks on bots. Um, so 
uh, you know, this is this is a case in which it's basically an 8-bit microcontroller like an Arduino, and um, and it allows the uh, bot to uh, automatically learn what what obstructions are and what to do with obstructions. Pretty cool stuff. Um, again, it's an example where like if if you've ever tried to program um, a robot with a rule-based system, it's like yeah, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. People have been doing it for a long time, but it's brittle. It, it uh, can also take a lot of time. It can be very difficult. It can, um, it's not necessarily going to handle uh, scenarios in which it hasn't seen before. So the idea, again, machine learning is to allow it to handle scenarios that it, it has not seen before, that it, that it doesn't, uh, it hasn't been trained on already, but it's able to generalize solutions and react flexibly to those scenarios, okay? Um, uh, Yet another uh, toy car. But then quadcopters, huge application space for neural networks. Massive. Um, this is just one example where um, uh, it's, the neural network is controlling the quadcopter stability. So this is a very interesting case because um, the, the problem is, is uh, fairly complex. It's, uh, you're trying to keep a quadcopter level. Um, even though there's like wind and other things, maybe some th somebody hitting it, uh, and what you need to do is is take some inputs like an accelerometer or a gyroscope, and then somehow tell motors what to do. How on earth are you going to do that? It's a very complex problem, um, and there's a, been a ton of totally fascinating research into that. And neural networks are uh, an excellent solution in many ways. Um, there's also in the quadcopter space um, uh, navigation. Uh, uh, from images, okay? So it's like this, this example, this is from 2016. Um, it's, just a, it's just a quadcopter with a camera on it, a color camera, and that camera, the image, is the only information that it has to do navigation with, okay? It doesn't have any other sensors, not ultrasonic, not, you know, LIDAR, whatever. Um, the only thing it has is a, a color image, and it's going to uh, figure out where the path is going. So it's 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 fine. It's wayfinding completely by itself on a path through through the woods that, in many cases, it's hard for a human to tell where the path goes. Okay, and this was it's a really impressive video. Again, the links will be in the slides. Um, so uh, if you, you know if if you're trying to solve a problem, um, it's helpful to have some guidelines on when to use a neural network or when not to. Um, basically, again, uh, if you need to classify some inputs into some outputs. Uh, uh, that's what a neural network is for, uh, in, in many senses. Um, and if you're going to have novel inputs, inputs that you, that it, uh, uh, that you haven't seen before, that you don't, um, uh, can't pre-train it on, um, especially if your inputs are noisy. So uh, a, a, a classic example um, for neural networks is optical, char or, well, character recognition. Um, so, you know, obviously, if you write the letter A, um, everybody's going to write the letter A differently every single time. You can't just do a pixel-by-pixel pixel comparison and have that ever work. You need something flexible, something that uh, handles noisy input, um, and that is easily the single biggest advantage of neural networks and related machine learning algorithms. Okay, um, and then, you know, lastly, we're, we're hackers, so it's like, you know, use a neural network because it's cool, I don't know. Um, uh, so when not to use a neural network, when any other solution will suffice. That's the thing. It's like there, there, it's, it can be complicated. It can be way overkill. Um, it can be slow. It can take a lot of memory. There, there can definitely be some uh, caveats there. Um, it's also a black box. Um, so if you have a, a particularly any kind of like complex neural network, like multi-layer neural network, um, you may get scenarios where it's classified something incorrectly, or maybe it classified something correctly, but you don't know why, you will never know why. There's no way, really, to, uh, to kind of get some introspection on, on uh, what the neural network is doing. Um, and lastly, it's, you know, don't use a neural network just because it's cool. Um, no. Okay. So to, uh, you know, okay, the title of the talk is how to put a neural network on an Arduino. I'll go through the big process and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you my own uh, personal example. Um, so you want to plan first. Uh, what are your inputs? What are your outputs? Um, what do you need to, to learn? What is the, the classification scheme? Can it be done without machine learning? Um, um, okay, so online training or offline. Um, 
uh, you're going to have, uh, in supervised learning, you're going to have a data set. You're going to have a data set that's labeled that you can do the training with. And almost all cases, if you want to do an neural network on an embedded platform, something very, very small um, with minimal memory and speed, um, you want to do your training offline. Uh, you do it first, you train the neural network, uh, and then that neural network can subsequently be used to do the classification. So there's no reason to do um, the train. Uh, it doesn't make sense to do the training while it's attempting to classify, although there are interesting cases and uh, forms of neural networks that do do that. Um, but basically, for the many situations, you're going to train offline. So you, you basically would run your, your training scheme like on your computer and then uh, basically transfer the neural network onto the uh, Arduino or whatever platform it is. Um, and then all it has to do in real time is do the actual classification. Um, and you know, figure out your performance uh, requirements or constraints. If you know that something needs to be done in real time, how real time are we talking about? You know, is 30 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. Um, hardware, um, you know, I mean, probably your hardware in many cases is already going to be determined. It depends on like what power supplies you have, what batteries. Um, uh, space, of course, in the case of quadcopter, you need it to be ultra light. Absolutely, you know, every single micro ounce counts. Um, and, you know, you're already spending a bunch of weight on batteries, so you don't want the uh, microcontroller to, to weigh you down. Um, and if you have an access to a supercomputer, I mean, that's, that's cool too. Um, software, um, you, you want to find the approach to machine learning that is appropriate for your uh, application. That's the kind of thing where it's like, if you can ask somebody about it, then, then it'll be way faster than Googling around uh, for like 13 days straight until you have some vague idea of what algorithms are what. Um, and then find a library. Maybe don't write your own library from scratch. Um, that might uh, be a waste of time. Um, and the basic idea is that you're going to take some inputs, run it through the algorithm, and get some outputs. That's basically all of everything we're ever doing. Um, but this is a particular class of solving that problem. Um, and uh, there's going to be some parameters uh, involved in the network or the algorithm. Um, and uh, so a perfect example is something called learning constant, which controls how fast or slow the network is going to uh, learn things. Um, and uh, so you initially, you kind of need to guess at these parameters uh, and then um, tweak them as you go. OK, so the actual training portion. Um, where do you, where is the training data coming from, and do you have enough of it? Uh, if you are trying to do something like uh, uh, optical character recognition, then you're going to need a data set of like a million, well, ideally as many uh, examples as you could possibly get. So like a thousand examples of the capital letter A, a thousand examples of lowercase a, and on and on and on. And the more train data you have, the better. And again, this is labeled, meaning that you know in advance which letters are which so that you can tell it. This is that, this is that. Um, and as we said, if you, can, you, you can probably do offline training in most cases. OK, and then uh, the actual classification is, is when you are actually doing the thing. You're actually uh, running the application. Um, you know, run it. See if you are getting the results you expect. Um, try to get some error rates um, and adjust parameters until you get what you want, and then question, question mark, and then profit. OK, so what I built, um, and, and when I was getting originally into neural networks, um, I was at ITB. And I uh, came up with this thesis where I wanted to see if some robots could autonomous, autonomously emerge their own language amongst themselves. Um, and uh, the way that I did that is I built, <coughs> I built four of these, you know, a robot is the best term. It's not the kind of robot that moves, um, but it's a robot. It has a speaker and a microphone and a color LED and some other stuff, you know? Uh, oh, and an XB, so a radio. Um, and what these, oh, and so then I um, wrote a library because I think at the time there was no, um, uh, there's no neural network library for the Arduino, so I found a super ultra basic C library uh, plain C, and I adapted it to this, which was a lot of like copy and paste and then uh, tweaking. Um, and um, to my uh, to my dismay, 
it ended up getting a lot of stars, which was uh, unsettling. Um, and so maybe don't use this one, though, in the future, because uh, some people have come along since then and made, like, way better ones. This is extremely rudimentary. I mean, that maybe, maybe like, if you, if you just need something ultra basic, then maybe mine is appropriate. Um, okay, so what's the goal here, though? Um, so the, the idea behind the thesis project was uh, how does language emerge and, um, and can I demonstrate language emergence? So I, I, I thought, okay, well, first of all, these, these things need to have, they, they need to respond to their environment some way. They need to sense their environment some way. So they have a microphone and a photo cell. And uh, their output is a sequence of four tones um, played from its speaker. Uh, so what they're doing is they're, they're observing their environment and then they're reacting to changes in their environment. So if you turn the light on in fr in, for one of them, it's going to, uh, to note that and say, like, oh, the, li the light just came on, and then it's going to say its word for that event. Um, and it's, the words are these short series of, of tones, which are like these funny beeps. Um, but here's the thing. So in supervised learning, you need to say, you need to say, like, uh, this is the input, and this is what the output should be, uh, and that's how you do training, okay? So this experiment was this funny kind of, of, of online training where the, um, uh, the training process is happening in real time because every time one of the robots uh, speaks, um, it's also transmitting its input-output pair to all of the others, okay? So this is equivalent to, um, to me saying, to like the lights going on, and I say, bright and the uh the rest of you are listening and, and associating like oh when the lights came on he said bright okay and that's what they're doing they're listening to each other um and they're updating the weights of their neural network um they're, they're saying like gradually they're saying okay uh this one said uh said bright for this particular uh, input, um, I'll, I'll kind of adjust my waist to, to get a little closer to that. Um, but this is happening unevenly. So um, another robot then might um, hear a loud sound and say its word for loud uh, and transmit that to the others. And so what happens is that at the beginning, they all have randomized weights. They, they uh, all have different words for the same experiences. Um, and, and so this is shown in this kind of like binary representation of the outputs. Um, and over time, as this process goes on of, of uh, reacting to changes and then uh, essentially teaching the others, something amazing happened, which is that they all end up with the same words for the same things. And that was the goal. And I was like, oh my god, it worked. Um, they emerged their own language just by uh, listening to each other, by, um, by observing the combinations of input, input patterns and output patterns. Um, so, I, uh, like I said, on, I have this slide of a bunch of, of links. There's, um, at, there's at least, like I think that probably the best or least worst neural network library to use at this point for um, Arduino and, and other microcontroller platforms is this, uh, by this guy, um, Prana, um, who I don't know, but um, he found my library and, um, you know, made a better one. And that's what we're all here for. Open source, oh my god. Um, and uh, it was really cool. Like, he commented on um, some of my uh, issues on GitHub. And, uh, and then it was like, OK, well, I made a better one that does all these extra features, like backpropagation, multi-layer networks, and then arbitrarily connected networks. Um, so it's actually, it's actually really cool. I haven't gotten to use it personally. Um, there's at least one other one that's, that's like, really new and, like, has, has really fancy graphic design, but I, I don't think it has a lot of features. Um, and uh, so then there's all kinds of other stuff like self-organizing apps. If I could do a whole another presentation, I'd do that. Um, and uh, there's, a, a, there's a dissertation on um, neural network implementations on embedded systems. OK, awesome. Um, and, and if I were to recommend one single book to all of you, to anyone who has an interest in neural networks, it's this book that nobody apparently knows about called The Mind Within the Net by a guy named Spitzer. It's actually MIT Press. Um, and uh, it's, it's non-technical in, in the good ways. It talks about what neural networks are and, and how they function in this incredibly easy to understand way. I cannot recommend it enough. 
um, and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, thank you very much. That's my talk. Do we have any questions? Or do we have time for questions? No time for questions. OK, well, find me after the, afterwards. Pleasure speaking to you all.